Okay, welcome. It's Tuesday, February 5th, 2019, 6 p.m. First, we're calling the meeting of the Rockingham Board of Liquor Commissioners together. We have 10 applications. Um, Lee Size Market Incorporated, second class, Bells Falls Country Club, outhouse, outside consumption, Bells Falls Country Club, first class, Halliday's Greenhouse and Flores, uh, second class, Global Montello Group Corporation, second class, Petrograss, Petro Gas Group, New England, second class, Wonder Bar, first class, Penguin Mart, LLC, what are they looking for? What does it say? Athens Pizza House and J.W. Sandry. Move to approve all 10 of the uh, liquor licenses as proposed, as I just read. I'll second it. Any further discussion? Any questions, concerns? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Okay, close that liquor commission. We have to, we don't have to move to adjourn that, do we? No. No, I didn't think so. It's on there, but we yeah. don't have to. All right, now I'll call the Rockingham Select Board uh, meeting to order. But first of all, Chukmong Namoy, happy Lunar New Year to everyone. That was Vietnamese. Oh. Anyway, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it is uh, Lunar New Year, or some people call it Chinese New Year, but it's actually many others than China who celebrate it. So, happy New Year. All right, any additions to the agenda? Happy New Year to you. Um, no, I do not have any. Thank you. Uh, proof minutes of January 31st. Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any public comment? Items not on the agenda. Mm, seeing none. Moving on. All right. Manager's report. Yes, I have a few things. Um, Saxon River snow removal downtown will be happening this week. Um, also, weather related, we will be ordering more sand. We need to go over sand. Uh, we, we need to uh, order more sand uh, because of all the ice this winter so far. And we will go, oh, probably go over that line item, but we'll compensate for it by reducing the crushing item. So the total budget will not be over. Um, you recall the Oak Hill Trails group, the folks who were working on the trails? They want to come back to both of the boards in March. Um, they've been up updating their documents and they're ready to come back. And in the meantime, they want to offer a um, hike opportunity for the boards and for the public to see what they're talking about. And two dates that we spoke of are Sunday, February 24th, and then having a rain snow date of March 4th. So if that's if that sounds like something that would be generally acceptable to you, um, they'll go ahead and schedule it. Make a suggestion that we have that them at their second meeting because the first one is generally a reorganization meeting. Yeah, I, I did not offer the March 5th meeting. Do the two dates sound good for, and, and does a Sunday make sense? Okay. Um, and then on Thursday, three of us are going to the town meeting tune-up. Um, and February 7th, Thursday, is also the deadline to register for local government day, following Thursday the 14th. Um, uh, do you normally do a consolidated um, approach, or do you have a strategy? Do we ever do It's usually that whoever decides they want to go or are able to go. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm unable to go on the 14th. I, I was planning on going. I'm on the fence. I was looking at the agenda to see if there's anything interesting to talk about. Or I can see the Holmberg is there, so, uh, you know. Well, there's alternate funding mechanisms, which is always interesting. Yeah, that looked interesting. Yeah. But unfortunately, I can't make it. So I'll, I'll give Suzanne a call in the morning and let her know one way or the other. I, I emailed her and let her know where I was. So. Okay. Um, and then the elevator work is actually complete. We're waiting on the oh, inspection. The um, they had to work out some no, stuff with the alarm, so we had alarms going lots of for much of the day today. Um, but it's not yet open to the public. Uh, we need to get it inspected, which hopefully will happen tomorrow. Um, so stay tuned. We'll we'll let people know as soon as it's as soon as it's working. Um, and we got the town report to the printer, so that was a, a big internal milestone today. So that's all I have. And do we know when those town reports will be? On schedule. The, we're working on picking them up on the 19th and then distributing them on the 
between then and I think the 22nd is the deadline. We're, we're not, our schedule is fine. We're fine. Okay. And then for people, they can pick them up are they here. At the regular place? places. Yeah. Which are what? Here, police station. Police size. And I'd be in the library, I would the expect. Library. The library. Library. Um, the bank. The bank. And they used to have some at the Rockingham Vet Clinic, too, but I don't know if they still do that. We okay. can take them wherever. Okay. All right. Anything else? Any questions? Okay. Moving on. Consideration of health order regarding Hetty Green Motel acting as the Rockingham Board of Health. So this has been discussed and um, we'll go over it one more time. We have a um, public health order, a proposed public health order in your packets. Um, this goes back to the last meeting we had where you gave me permission or you um, allowed me to proceed with serving that notice of public health order to all the legal heirs of the property as well as um, I sent out notice to all the abutters. Um, the goal of the health order, in summary, is basically secure the building posted against trespass. Um, the duties of a health officer, one thing that I, we had some really good questions at the last meeting um, about mitigating a public hazard and is that a problem today versus mitigating a public health risk. A risk is not a hazard at present. The state statute, and we were going to have Attorney Ancuda here to talk about this in more detail. He can bring a, a legal element to our discussion. But um, there's consensus that the statute allows us to act either as a public health hazard, that means it presently is a problem, versus a public health risk, which is the potential for a problem. So we are authorized. Um, both as the health or, uh, officer and as the Board of Health that you operate as um, to execute a health order for either that hazard or that risk. Um, when we served all the notices per requirement, uh, we heard back from all the would-be legal heirs of the property and um, no one has, has any interest in claiming this estate um, and no one had any problem with us boarding up the hotel or the motel. They were actually supportive of it. Um, we did send out, like I said, the abutters notices, and we heard from a couple of folks that were supportive of boarding up the motel. They report the same thing that I've reported to you, which is people are coming and going in there. We're not sure why. It's um, it's it's a period, it's got some activity there. There's nothing really strange that we can find to date but there's a lot of going in now. Did I miss anything? Who uh -oh. has observed the going in and out? The abutters have observed people going in and out. They're the ones that have called the police, and the police are the way. Well, uh, number two on your notice of intent that we assigned, or number one in the packet, second sentence is uh, evidence of illegal trespass the police department has observed. You got on the three, and then you say there's no evidence a person's attempting to apply. So there's a distinction between somebody entering and occupants. I would define your occupants as um, you've decided you can visit me in my house or you can stay overnight. And um, I think you're occupying a place if you decide to stay for an extended period of time. We haven't met that threshold there at the moment. Yeah, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to divert this or, you know, subvert this thing. I, I want to make sure we're getting the wording and, and using the right ordinance or approach to getting this done because if it doesn't end up in court somewhere, we want to make sure our steps are covered. Uh, point of fact, um, your comments prior resulted in a lot of improvement to the existing order right now. So we were able to kind of get our house in order. This is not something we typically tackle, which is usually we're coming in way after the fact. And there's a price to pay for that, but it's always been clear health hazard. This is the first attempt we've had where we see a risk in place, and we're trying to act on that at that level. So it's been well appreciated. I, I guess I, I would say, explain to me the difference between this situation with trees falling on the building and the one on Hapka Street that's been a tree fall on the building that's been closed up by the unsafe building owners by the Bells Falls then Fire Chief Bill Weston with the then Zoning Committee uh, 
Administrator Ellen Howard. The unsafe building ordinance and th th those distinctions uh, were in the realm of opinion, so I'll offer you my opinion. Um, I often think that the building itself poses or presents a, a, a safety issue to people that are in the public realm. So I should be afforded the ability to walk down a sidewalk and not have something fall on my head or be exposed to that. I don't think the Hetty Green um, Motel falls in that category where something that's going wrong in that building has the potential to then exert itself on the public highway or, or if there's no sidewalk there, but if there was, that kind of thing. So that's the distinction. Have good, um, same conclusion. That's all we want to do here at the motel is just secure the building so there's no entrance egress. We visit that building about once every other month just to make sure that there's no one there. Um, so it's a, it's a good question. Any other questions? And we've, we've said you have run this by Ancuda. Attorney is he, is he Ancuda. coming or no? He's not we expected him. We and expected the, him. the meeting was delayed, but I, I thought he got notice that it was delayed. I'm yes. sorry he got notice that it was delayed, so I, we did expect him here. And I did have a conversation with him about about the ordinance and or about the um, proposal, and he is um, supportive of it. And um, I explain some of the concerns that the board had um, and one of them was our authority to go in and actually board up someone else's property and his advice or his um, opinion on it really he should be speaking to this but um, I think it's important is that there's uh, very minimal harm that would be done to the building where we would actually be protecting the building as opposed to you know we're not taking rights away from someone um, if we board it up we're protecting the building and it could easily be undone it's not something that's that's um, unmitigatable so so there's there's very little harm on that side and then uh, there is a, a public interest to to protecting and, and securing the building. Did he give you any offer or any advice on the legality that we might be facing if somebody contests the fact, say one of the debtors comes and say, <coughs> board it up, oh, I can't get anything, get anything out of there or can't attack anything. Yeah, that's exactly what, what we were talking about. He, so in that case, he would say, so we take a board off and fix it. You know, that, that fixes the, the claim. And unfortunately, I'm really disappointed he's not here because he was also going to talk about um, the process or, of getting, if, if either of the boards wants to get control of that that building, um, he's prepared to, to talk about it and talk about the cost, the, the legal cost of doing so, which uh, when Ray Masuko spoke about it, he wasn't prepared about it. So those, the numbers that Ray had are higher than the numbers that, that Steve has in terms of the cost. Now, looking at the proposed house order that you want us to sign, number four states, the motel shows minimal impacts from theft or vandalism. There is no evidence of persons attempting to occupy the motel. So, it's almost like it's a sort of a fine line between the health order and the nuisance. We have no nuisance ordinance, or not yet anyway. There's a vacant building in the you know, property order, uh, ordinance. I mean, you could say that accurately. You could also say that it's the, the line that we're trying to choose between a health hazard and health risk. Gaetano, you had something? What's your question? This is in reference to taking a board off. Him. Didn't I just read that you have contacted them all and none of them are interested in... None of them are willing to take any action whatsoever to claim that estate. So they have no legal authority right now to act. Oh, who signs this or you just post this? We, again, we send it to the ether. We were basically sending it to the estate and the would-be heirs. And, and then after a period of non-compliance, then the town would step in and do it. They, so they're agreeing if they don't um, reply? I mean, if you just... Don't take a board off. If you're giving them, giving them an opportunity to do that now, then once we do something, you know, I wouldn't take a board off to let someone in. 
Nor would I. Well, someone just said we would. No, it was, if it was an heir who had I think this rights is their to the building, I, I don't know how... I, I could see a situation where we go through this and then maybe they, somebody would take title to it. You know, I, don't, I, I can't say that would not happen, but if someone with rights to the property did come and say, I, I don't want it boarded up, then one remedy we would have is to take a board off. So, and, and the point of that conversation was that what the town is proposing to physically do to the building is not something that can't be easily undone. It's not as if we're proposing to take title to the property or um, demolish part of it or some all of it. What we're proposing to do is, is pretty minimal and could actually be viewed as a protective um, service. I mean... So who's the, the, the health order actually being served on? The estate and the would-be legal heir. So we, okay. we um, after our conversations, we took a very conservative tack and said, you know, let's just send it to everyone. Okay. So like the other concern was uh, how we're going to, if we're, are we going to be able to recoup the cost if we have to go out and play this on again, off again board situation? I mean, yeah. You know. Well, I think that was my question. If this is their opportunity, then this is their opportunity we can yeah. it's boarded up and they want no part of it and that's how it should yeah. remain the only time we release boards is somebody wants to buy it and would be willing to take the asset you know which in this case is that whole estate is a negative asset but stranger things have happened and we've opened up the building to those people okay any other questions um, not on this topic, but on this subject. Are you planning to stick around for the rest of this meeting, or are you headed out after this is done? I will stay. I was not planning, but I'll stay. Well, no, then I'll just uh, approach it right now, because I'm hearing some things about the chemical building down there, specifically the interior of access. So maybe I should drop you a call here. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, alert me to anything. I'm right. Not aware of anything going on right now. I was made aware. I don't know if it's, I have no reason to believe it's not accurate, but um, Very I'll bring it up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we need a motion. Oh, no. One more. This is a point of history, a point of information. When we did Green Street, uh, Pell Street, excuse me, that was an authentic health order because there was uh, crap hanging off the side of the building, toilet paper and everything coming down. But we boarded that building up, and then the owner wanted access four or five different times. They had to go down and take the boards off, the whole nine yards. So I'm just saying, you know, I don't think we even recouped any of that cost either. No. So. All right. Motion to issue the health order. Is that what we're going to do? I'll go ahead and make the motion that the Rockingham Select Board consider it in consideration of the health order regarding the Hetty Green Motel authorize the um, health yeah. officer and any other necessary individual in the town of Rockingham to execute the order in relation to that the Hetty Green Motel. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. And Thank so you. I guess we'll have a discussion at another time. About with the attorney. Whether we want to, with, when we have the real numbers or closer numbers about what it would take to take on that as probate and try to recoup some of our taxes and investment in that spot. but. Okay. Otherwise, it's, it will sit there, board it up for the foreseeable future. Yes. All right. Anything else? Probably better sitting there boarding up than becoming a heroin den or something. That's why we trying to do this. All right. Moving on. Consideration of the Main Street Arts request to have alcohol. Thanks. Uh, by the way. Um, consideration of Main Street Arts request to have alcohol served at the performance of Chicago at the Bellas Falls Opera House, March 26th to April 6th. Um, David? 
kind of speak to that or? Sure. Or, yeah. um, I don't actually know if there's somebody here from the end. Hi. Oh, there. Hi. Gloria. Hi, Gloria. Hi, Gloria. So, yeah, um, I don't know what else there is to say. I think we're going to serve uh, beer and wine. Uh, the idea is to make a special event. It seems very fitting for the piece itself. Um, Met with Rick and talked about possible locations uh, for the vendor to be uh, to minimize any traffic issues. So I guess I'm really wondering. I mean, this is my first time bringing this before the select board. So if you have specific questions, I'm certainly eager to try and answer. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. First. first question is. Um, Town of Rockingham getting a cut of any of this alcohol sales? No. No. Okay. Second question would be to the theater manager. Are you happy with what's proposed, or do you have any concerns, thoughts, or? Yeah, I mean, David and I uh, discussed traffic uh, situations. That I think, as everyone knows, if you set it up outside the uh, elevator and, and we have the size of an audience we're hoping for. It, it can be congestion. Uh, we've discussed an alternative area across from the concession stand in the lobby that mm -hmm. I think would work quite well. Uh, and we also did discuss to make sure that they're not selling soda, they're not selling water, nothing in right. competition with our concessions. Right. David uh, and, and I, I think, are in agreement on that. And uh, so yeah. any concerns I have are, are uh, allayed. I'd really feel better if we were getting a cut of something on that. But. Well, of course I would, too. Yeah. Peter? Yeah. I have two. Um, are you able to sell concessions at the same time? I think that happened the last time when Sweeney Todd was here. Right. Yes. Okay. Second question is more of a curiosity than anything else. If you were not able to serve alcohol, would that diminish your attendance? I don't. I, I really have no data to speak to that. I doubt that it would significantly decrease our attendance. We're trying to make a special event out of it. Um, I don't believe that we're going to make any significant money uh, selling alcohol uh, based on my dialogue with Sarah Campbell, who's uh, doing that. And talking to Josh uh, Hearn, who's done a couple of these events, I'm, I'm not sure how much money anyone really makes on the sale of alcohol uh, at these events. There's a lot of insurance and there's a lot of, um, you know, there's servers and there's material and there's the license fee of pulling. And um, I'm, although I'm hopeful that we might walk out with a thousand dollars extra income, um, I'm not banking on it. Um, so, We've already upped our fee by $1,600 from what it was by getting rid of the, uh, for the last two years it was all tickets over 200 tickets were charged a dollar fee per ticket. This year it's every ticket is being charged a fee. So that's an additional 1600 bucks going to the town. Uh, I admit I, I would not feel really in support of making the alcohol also an additional fee for us as we move forward. But you know, you can lay in whatever you think and then I'll decide whether we want to do it. One more. Um, the way the film, correct me if I'm wrong, Rick, the way the film situation works is the film operators get a percentage of the cut that you take is that correct? The ticket price. 60, 40 percent? The studios usually get 65 percent of Are we doing that with this presentation? Oh, no. They, what they do is they pay a rental, a, a, a set rental fee, and a ticket, uh, well, we, in this case, we get a dollar of, of every ticket okay. sold. Is the rental fee set for the schedule, or do we make some exceptions? Uh, it's set for the schedule. Okay. Any other questions? All right. So a motion to approve the uh, sale. Motion to approve the 
request to serve alcohol uh, on municipal property uh, for the presentation of the uh, play at Carl's Chicago uh, and authorize the select board chair to sign the application. Second. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. <coughs> Great. Okay, moving on. Public works. So first is the certificate certification certification. <laughs> Road mileage. Man, I have a really hard time. Say it in Vietnamese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, might be. <laughs> That'll help us, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, you'll see the memo there, titled Certificate of Highway Mileage FY20. One slight change, that was Keefe Road, uh, Class 4 Road, being deducted. Uh, that is uh, less 0.33 miles. This has no impact on the annual financial plan, which is the next step you'll see in about a couple months, because it is a Class 4 road, so there's no monetary impact. Just kind of keeping the form straight. So this, uh, my recommendation is to prove it as marked up, and we'll send it to the state so they can keep the record straight. So we just need to approve it. Is that what happens? Right. All right. So I'll move to approve this certificate of highway mileage as presented here tonight. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Okay. Next, discussion of the summer 2018 downtown paving project. Mike, here that. <coughs> memo here. Yeah, there's a memo right there. Mm -hmm. Do you have it? Okay, so starting off with this uh, paving budget status memo. Mm -hmm. That's uh, for FY 17, 18, and 19. So I took a look at um, you know, it's a three-year, you know, budgets with one project, with basically two, two paving projects. So I took a, take, took a look at all that, see where we end up. I think it was a question that one of the board members asked a couple weeks ago, or maybe a month ago. Um, so as a, a net, the first bullet there, select board approval versus expenses. It, so we're, there, we're over 33685 A lot of that's due to the square yards of chip seal. So when we, we actually swept Rockin' Hill Road, we ended up gaining probably at least three feet on Rockin' Hill Road, uh, and increase increase in the asphalt price. So with the, the second bid, the one I put together was actually based on an asphalt price index, mm -hmm. uh, which is basically why we got real competitive pricing to start with. Uh, and I've seen that it's, it's a recommended way of putting it out. In other words, your prices were in the $60 range versus the $95 for the first, first contract. Uh, although it's different, you can't quite look at that. It's different downtown paving versus, well, Saxon River Main Street's a little bit like downtown, but uh, Rockingham Hill, uh, Hill Road is fairly easy paving. Um, so we did have a hit on that. The price of asphalt went up through the summer, and the way that is actually built in, you could, the price could actually go up or down. And I've been here to the board members' board meetings in the past where actually we saved money. So it goes one way or the other. Uh, so that was the cost of. Twenty-one thousand four eighty-four. Uh, so that's the total of the thirty-three thousand six eighty-five, and then the grant that was put together. I reviewed that from last spring. This is or whatever that was put together it might have been a year ago. Uh, the grant for the downtown it was based off some of the higher numbers. So when the price actually did go out there, it was still considerably less than the number that was in the grant as it submitted. So all you could get when you get go for reimbursement is 20% of the total cost. So 20% of the total cost came to 157,689 versus 175. 80%. Uh, well, yeah, great. 80. Sorry about that. 80%. So there was 17,311 less in revenue than what we had anticipated. So kind of both things worked against us. Uh, you know, the total between the two, uh, the 33,000 and the 17,000, we had a little over fifty thousand dollars, fifty, fifty-one, fifty-two thousand dollars. So I just want to, you know, let's bring that to the board's attention. We have it figured out where 
Uh, we have not done any of the crushing yet. If we're going to do some ledge in the, in the spring, we'll hold off that and do it into the, the budget year after that. So that way it will offset that. Plus a little bit of the sand, extra sand cost, extra 1,000 yards. I would take that in consideration. Okay, Tony, you got a question? I have some questions coming up, but in reference to that, if you'd have done more work, would, would you have gotten the full grant amount? If we'd have done 17 something worth of we, we additional did more work, work. The, the more work we yeah it's a good question so actually we added in the westminster street because it was sort of part of the project so and we were still 17 yeah. something so under uh, still the under proposed grant yeah the I, I scratched my head for a while and, and uh, cynthia knew it took me a little to come up with this but she knew i was scratching my head and, and she knew there was uh, we, she asked a question before uh, shannon got here are we gonna be able to do it i said well i'll do the best i can so you know, we kept it to do we did a little bit more work all within the same confines of the same project uh, but there's no more you know we couldn't go down Canal Street and this is a different street going up Rock Canal Street that being said though you might think we're losing 17,000 but we're really not no the, the state keeps track of all that but so it's essentially you get it you don't get it now you get it funded money we could have used well no no what I'm saying is you will never never use that lose that money because okay every town that you get structure grants or paving grants they keep track you know you know throughout the calendar year so what that might mean is the next paving grant we get at some point might be a year earlier you know and uh, and the other idea I mentioned to Mike was we talked to B-Trans this spring we're not due for a class 2 paving grant this year because we just had the, had the funds but just say hey you know we've got we kind of left $17,000 on the table will you allow us to put that in for uh, Pleasant Valley Road to get a little extra shipping money he might it's worth it worth asking him. and uh, if he says well he can't guarantee it but it doesn't hurt to fill one out so as the towns you know submit all their applications they might have thirty or forty thousand dollars left over and so it might be one that instead of 17 we made that 30 or 40 just so he can fill up his his slots because he has you know a certain budget within his district to use up so we won't give up on it yet and, and it still doesn't like I'm saying, you might not have it now, you will get it in the average over the long run. You'll get that, that funds. There's a bunch of notes we can go through. I don't know if you want to go through all those notes or. There's <coughs> just some notes I had and coming up with expenses. My bottom line, my recommendation is anytime, I, I do recommend putting in the asphalt price index when I put out the bids. If you don't, the paving contractors they've got to bump their number up and then and to hopefully just in case the price of asphalt goes up but if they do that the price goes down you're not going to see the savings <coughs> so in the future you know you'll probably see me have you know putting five percent recommendation in there to cover that to cover that yeah any additional questions on that spreadsheet all right and oh, like i said we've got uh, we found the way to make up the 65 to, and that crushing line item. We'll just hold off here. All right. I have a question. Yep. Okay. Have we gotten to the back page yet? Um, nope. I mean, we're still working on this spreadsheet, spreadsheet but no. now we're moving on. Right. Yes. Okay. Now so back everyone has summarized I would that. listen first. Yeah. But go ahead. Go ahead now. Yep. Sure. Okay. On the back page, this is the uh, rock and paving uh, it's more of not so much sidewalk but the rock and paving downtown project if you want to call it uh, you'll see paving number one was put out and the downtown sidewalks put out you see all the dates there and the paving number two dates uh, one was awarded contract completion uh, the start dates and the notes down below that's what I'm going to go over right now so the first contract was prepared and sent out in March that was prior to any sidewalk work uh, Nighttime work number two there. Nighttime work could have could have had an effect on the quality if only to add the added pressure to get it done ASAP. I've heard that from the contractor. I think Mike concurred with that. You know, so there there is that pressure. Uh, number three, there was no reference to the height of the structures in the first contract. This is referring to the gate valves, uh, catch basins. There wasn't much change on catch basins, drain manholes, sewer manholes. Number four. Contractor did not. The contract did not call out for any adjustment of any catch basins. We did. We did actually do one catch basin. That's by the uh, by the stairs. 
and uh, providing the quality or the quantity of structures did play a role in the quality of work, particularly in the wheel tracks. When you, when you pay, I've, I've had three, four years of pavement experience myself. Anytime you got a pavement that's either bridge joints is a good example. If you get your, or, or trenches, depends on how the trench is, but like a bridge, you're going in and out of a, a, a bridge. It's so hard for some of these pavement contractors to get those bridge joints perfect. And you'll feel those once in a while, a bump one way or the other. Same thing on structures. Anytime that screed, the paver is actually, the tracks are riding up and over any of these structures, that screed is following it. Not 100%. Every inch that the paper goes up, but it does follow it and it does go up a little bit, although it does try to cut that off. Uh, and at number six, we, we should have had more gate risers uh, of different heights. So that's probably what we should have just not knowing how they're going to lay out. If we had a bunch of dairy varying heights, you know, inch, inch and a half, maybe two, two might have been probably too high. We, didn't have enough. we had too much of one size and not enough. Number seven, uh, so Mike was out there with the crew at night, and it was his decision to leave the structures where they were, as some he thought would, uh, were low, a riser would have made them high. So they did, actually. They spent time. He did make them high. We actually placed risers on them. I'd much rather have them low for plowing purposes and for safety and damages. Didn't have them I, I honestly didn't think they were that bad. A couple of my questions afterwards during the daylight, but I, I didn't think they were. The worst two I see here across the entire side, because they're both in a wheel track each side of the car, but the rest of them, I, I also don't think they're that bad. I'd rather have them where they are. Yep, and, and we've actually had, well, believe it or not, one of the guys that's no longer here, had a, a plow truck pop a mantle cover off Rockingham Street. Someone claimed he actually yeah, was yeah. trying to shoot the mantle cover at the guy coming the other way, and it's, that's never possible. saw it happen on School Street. It it um, it's happened more than once, school. I believe. Yeah. And I don't like using riders, because if they're sticking up an eighth of an inch, of the plow will find them, and it kicks them right out. Do damage to the pavement, damage to the equipment, serve the operator. Yeah. 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 Are you done? No, not yet. Okay, so the contract states to reset the uh, catch basins, main elevations, to proper elevations before the wear course pavement. Um, so you know, so that would, you know, that was done. Uh, number eight, the sidewalk work along. Let's see, sidewalk work installed was installed to design plans for ADA compliance. There was no attempt at getting a six inch. I do. I, I looked around trying to find the six inch that was talked about, uh, that guy talked about, <coughs> about curb in all locations. The only way we could have got six inches is to rebuild the section of Westminster Street from, from basically downtown. We had to cut, not just mill three inches, inches you'd have to mill probably six inches, all the pavement you'd have to take out of there. And by the time you take all the pavement out of there, then you, you may be down in some gravels and you may looking at dropping that gravels down. If you drop the gravels down, it may not be enough gravel, then you got to actually excavate, box cut it, put gravel back in. Uh, you're talking a bit lot bigger project when you get into that. So what, that what's the ADA work. requirement? Your, your first line but, of line says it's just the ADA, uh, Basically the cross slope of the sidewalk. So, and we have doorways. A lot of these sidewalk graves were, were an issue because of the doors. So, you know, the buildings, we try not to change it too much on all the doorways down through there. And then you step out, you try to match out. I mean, I didn't design it, but I know Todd uh, Henninger would probably scratch his head trying to come up with the right design on all this. And, uh, you know, and it's not 100% easy to do that because one grade affects the other grade, and they're all, and then the third one down, you might have to then go back and change the second one because and make the best average decision that you could. And we had a couple of changes in the field that were minor, but just to make things a little bit better. So no, it's it's tough on what what he was trying to do and make it perfect. Same thing as School Street, but not school, but uh, Canal Street, but that was completed a number of years ago. You know, those any downtown work where you step right onto the sidewalk is very difficult work. So uh, the next bullet: increase quality in future. My recommendation, uh, just as we did, drop all the structures except catch bases. You need to leave the, the catch bases open to take on the drainage. Uh, Although you'll see during construction, either just as they're milled down or even after the, the ship course, you'll see puddling like we had for a while just because the catch basins are at the final elevation. And you'll get rid of that when, you, when it's finally paved. So you drop them all down, mill it, shim it, overlay it, pave the top, then raise your structures. Uh, patch and heat it and blend it, but do it in a quicker amount of time. In other words, do it within two or three days when everything's still black, you'll never notice a difference. Uh, just catch basins where necessary. Uh, number seven is kind of a little alternative method to that. In other words, raise all these structures that are not uh, 
well, the ones in the wheel path, leave those down. All the rest you could probably raise up, you know. So I think if we had done a selective approach here, anything in the wheel track, kept it down until the final, and then, you know, there some might only been, what, maybe a dozen, less than a dozen we probably have to change. And then, then you'll have the best quality ride. And it's still a matter of, you know, the spec that, that I put together for Saxon River, uh, Rockingham Street, Pleasant Street, you know, is a, is a quarter inch enough? Maybe we need a half inch. You know, so we've got to take a hard look at that. Quarter, I think, in general would be enough, but if if you set them at a quarter and the plow's hitting them, that's not going to work. And what about curb stops and stuff like that? Curb stops aren't, they're, they're so small. Right, but it's not an issue? Not curbs. The gate valves, they can be an issue, but not the curb stops. Right. Yeah. Okay. The problem with the gate valves, there was no, there was no adjustment to them without a rising. Right. So they just, they're grown together. They've been there so long. Yeah. yeah. I realize okay. that. So there's no adjustment other than a rising. Uh, let's see. Yeah, just a few, a couple notes on the very, very bottom there. Uh, this project here, there was, there was no engineered grades on any of it. You know, it's, and any time you get areas like this, I'm surprised there was no puddles here. I was concerned for a while, Saks River Main Street, having a puddle by the circle. And then, so, you know, we, we noticed that after it was paved. You know, I let, I warned, I think one of my notes, some of my notices actually tagged it out that, you know, there's a puddle here, we'll try to take a look at it. We did, we looked at it, looked at it hard, able to get rid of that puddle. Or at least it might still be a real small one. It doesn't last long enough. That was the biggest thing downtown. I was running around with level checking to make sure grades for no puddling. Yeah. I mean, we got some puddles, but they don't stay there. They're, I mean, they're gone. Right. They, they drop off slowly, but they do drain away. And, and downtown is less than one, a lot of the areas less than 1% grade. Yeah. So, um, so if you think about it, in terms of puddles, we could have had a lot of puddles. You know, thankfully Mike was right there staying right on top of it. Like you said, carrying that level around, it does help. And, and Denny, Denny, Basin's crew, they really, you know, they care. They, they do a phenomenal job. And, you know, they, they weren't speeding I mean, through the that. was an issue. Denny said it right from the center on the roof, but we're only on the center right up front. They ended up getting the contract anyway. Right. Well, they asked about it. The last time we yeah. did this nightmare, he did it with his father 20 years ago. Same thing. But well, we did it during the day, which is it's terrible. It's terrible working down here today. It makes time more a lot better, but. Time's not the answer but I mean, back anytime you get probably contract of say two percent, I think one percent you probably do it. But Mike and I worked on a project on about fifteen years ago on West Street. The way I spec that out was let's do the project, it was a complete rebuild. We did the project, some of the sidewalks were just patched back in. But put the base in, and I told the contractor, now we're gonna shoot. We did, Mike and I remember us going walking down through there. Every twenty feet, we actually shot grades, every twenty feet. You know, on both edges of the road, and then I marked it out for the contract, and they hit it right on the money. And, and zero, some of that was anywhere from 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 percent grade. And it was coming from 121 up to high point, and then back down. And actually, it is. If you're not careful, you can have a, a puddle in a high point, or even a low point. You know, if, unless you know it's possible. You know, I've seen it in different projects, but so that came out you know perfect. But it it takes time and, and some engineering effort to to put the grades out there on projects that. Our engineer to start with, and uh, this one had you know not usually general. A lot of paving projects you don't engineer them. You know you try to work with contract the best you can, especially a downtown one. Too. That would have like my other note here. That would have driven up the cost probably twenty five percent for downtown pavement had we engineered it. And they did ask for it. They, they did. That was one of the, the pre bid meeting. They did ask for it, and it was not. It was not. So, so there's a risk. Because of cost. Yeah, because of cost. So you, you weigh the, and at that point, it, there was no time for anybody to engineer it anyway. The paving bit was already out. That went out at March, uh, or whatever the manager put it out then, March or April. I do. So, <clears throat> the contract that one would go off of is the one 
dated the 31st of May. That's contract number two, the one you redid. No, no. for downtown is the first, it was number, it was the other contract. The 16th? Uh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, 16th of May. Right, yeah. So in there it has the elevations for these structures, which we keep saying there was no elevations. It's clearly stated what they were to be set at. On the 16th of May? I, I couldn't find any in there myself. No. Not on the 16th. <coughs> no. The 31st one has several of them in there. Yeah, the 31st one I put together. That was well, which is it? The 31st or the 16th? 16th. Which was the Downtown is the 16th. 31st is Saxon River and Sorry. Rockingham Hill. Yeah. But it also says on the 31st. Okay, that's kind of minimal, but the, <coughs> at this point, but justifying that they're fine and saying that they're fine and we didn't know about them. There's some of them that are inch and a half low, the water ones. And then, what about the date of completion portion of these contracts where it says? Okay, what about it? What's the question? Well, it's clearly written when you were to be completed. Right. Yeah, it was, uh, as far as the date of completion, it was rain throughout the whole summer. Every day of rain delays the completion date. And some of this was, you know, we wanted them to finish up the sidewalk. Luckily, it was, we were fortunate we had one contractor doing it all, they had to the sidewalks. So for example, downtown paving, complete the sidewalks, then we'll do the final paving. So that's, so those two contracts working against that. So there was no hurry up and get it done on paving prior to any old, old home days. It's like, let's sidewalk first, then paving, and they scheduled it shortly thereafter. Well, I mean, I'm just reading what it says in the contract, when it was supposed to be done, and what would happen if it's not done in, right. a, in, nope. a, in a signed contract. Right. But there was work, there was communication back and forth with us and them, as far as, you know, we, we were both understood, you know, we'll wait till the uh, sidewalk project's complete, then schedule the paving, get it completed. And then, the nighttime work could affect the, the quality. Like, was that ever brought to our attention that if we chose the, I think we chose the nighttime work for cost savings and convenience of traffic and businesses, right? But was it ever brought to our attention that the quality might be less? I don't recall talking to you about it. No, I don't remember that. We had a lot of lights down, but there's still there a lot of shadows. Lot. Is it typical for nighttime? Paving work to be poor quality than daytime. I mean, it's just the the summary you've said to me. These are the questions I would respond. Like that was never brought to our attention. We chose it because it was less expensive. I think would save time and would be less of a burden to the downtown. So to so to blame some of the quality on that is was my question. I'll take full responsibility for it. For what? For, for the what? Lower, the low manholes. Well, the rest of it's not bad. Other than the manholes, the main gates. The main gates, I'll be honest with you, I didn't pay a lot of attention to them. They weren't in the wheel traps. A couple of them might be. But the manholes, like I said, I, I, my decision to leave them low rather than high. Um. I had a couple questions on the sidewalk. Are we going to get to that or do sure. that now? Yeah. Well, let's make sure we finish with this. Yeah. Is there any other questions on the paving? <coughs> no. I, oh, yeah. Just the only thing I want to, because I noticed it, and it was a premium, I guess, haven't paid for it, the striping. I know what we did for the state of Vermont, pretty much non-existent now. What we paid a premium, as I call it, from here south, has lasted well, give me your opinion. Did you see it more than I do? So. I think it's okay. Which part? Just down here, all this thermal plastic. The part that's still clearly visible? It ain't clearly visible. The yellow lines and the crosswalks? Well, the yellow lines, but the crosswalks are all faded. Look at them. 
not all of them, certain places, and not only in the tire tracks. There's certain ones that I think could have been the application. I've been keeping an eye on them. The ones that we paint, that we paint with the town that yeah. we pay, yeah. 80 hours a year, twice a year, five guys are gone. That's only one application. I don't think it's a waste of money. That's only one application. It goes in two, and that's a chip seal. That high stone's going to get knocked off. With I agree with the chip seal part. I yeah. still reference the ones on Atkinson Street, the yellow line, the crosswalks on Atkinson. And How old are those? Three years. Those have been painted over. A lot of Crosswalks have them. They're thermoplast. Yes, they the thermoplast. They've been painted over. Some of the plastic tape that we talked about a year ago that I brought in and showed you the pieces. Mm -hmm. The yellow we haven't, but some of them crosswalk bars have been painted over. I brought the pictures and I showed you. So the yellow line up the middle is the now original thermoplast? That's tape. It's all tape on Atkinson Street. There's no thermoplastic on Atkinson. It's all 3M tape. Every bit of it. Well, if you look at the crosswalks here, I see a few of them were uh, deteriorating. Mm -hmm. And it's odd. It's not only in the tire traffic. You can see some that are in tire traffic 75 feet up from the other one, that's fine. Some it's plowing. Some it's snowing. I, I know the one right by the, as you turn, make them corner here going on uh, from square up toward Westminster Street. The guy did say that that one right there will not last. Nothing will last right there. So th that's by the hotel window going across the road. So that's where the trucks are turning aggressively. So that's it. But the good thing about it, I mean, one thing you say, it's not all wear enough. You got something, you can see this crosswalks there. Right. So in the spring, well, they're not all no, no, they're not all gone. You know, so there'll be some touch up it won't be a complete redo. Mm -hmm. And actually, one thing that we'd like to try at some point is uh, some of that, that is it tape? The sheeting, thermoplastic, thermoplastic sheeting. sheeting that, but if you want it to last, the one you and I talked about a little while ago, mill, just grind it down just a little bit, whether it's a sixteenth of an inch or just something that, about the thickness or a little bit more. Mill, you know, mm -hmm. grind it, you know, mill it out like the little small machine we used to have. Uh, get there like a rent to infrared machine, Heat that up, lay that down, heat it again. Probably last a long time because the plows won't be rubbing so on. So that it's inset into the pavement. It's a, more work, but it. But know, that's just an idea. It's, it's an idea, yeah. and it's a struggle that every town has. We're not the you know the only town in the state. I mean, that's, we did thermal plastic, and it was it cost a lot of money, and it just wasn't holding up. That's why we went to paint. Everybody switched to paint. Just like everybody. I mean, they still do it, but more people do want to use paint than And the seasons where, like this, where it's been more ice, um, I imagine that has, if it's constantly freezing, and does that make a difference in how it wears? going to last down, down with the snow and the process and the traffic. Yeah, there are, at least there are some bars for safety. All right, any other questions? All right, sidewalk. You had a question on sidewalk? No? Sure, one no. question. Mm -hmm. Part there, granular backfill elevations, figure, and the scope of work in A, B, and D. Mm -hmm. Did we pay that? Was it was it ever done? The granular backfill is only paid for areas that they excavated out. Which they they didn't. Well, it wasn't much. That was. We had a fair amount. Ten thousand dollar number. You know how much of that was paid out? I have to look at the. Uh, well, we took it. If I had that. Which cut? What is this that we're talking about? So it, it's sidewalks. the line items called granular backfill. Uh, On the sidewalks. Yeah. Yeah, fourteen hundred dollars out of seventy one hundred was paid out. So the small portion. Is that in section A? Let's see. Eight A. Oh I guess there might be more than one. Let's see. Uh oh, yeah, eight A was fourteen hundred paid. Sixteen percent.
All right, any other questions? Yeah, yeah so, so on sidewalks. Uh, so I, I took a hard look at the paving, addressed that with the board. This is trying to figure out, so I figured I'll, this is preliminary, just let the board know anyway. And Wendy and I already talked about it, I talked to Lou Shane a little bit. So in the budget for sidewalks was $60,000. Uh, the project that was approved by the select board was 184592 The reason I'm bringing this up is Shannon wasn't here, Wendy wasn't here, I wasn't here. So maybe the board might remember, and I, I didn't see anything in the minute, so. Um, so what was approved was $124,000 over budget. This is from last, I think, May. Um, and the project came in uh, 187 803 versus the contract, 184 592 so it was pretty close. Um, one of previous uh, manager's memo, dated 5 14 18 targeted 104563 that could be used toward paving or sidewalks. Um, and we actually used, opted to use that toward paving. That was the extra Westminster Street and going out to uh, the tomb, past the tomb, or to the tomb on Old Terrace. My only speculation is maybe the previous years, there's a lot of unspent funds in previous years, sidewalk funds, uh, you know, that would more than cover it up. So I'm not sure if that was a part of thinking. Just use the unassigned fund balance. Uh, so at that point, right, you know, I'm, I'm talking to Shannon before she left. If we do it, if we do not do anything, it'll just probably come out of the unassigned fund balance. Uh, but it's something that you know we'll mail down and, and between now and the end of the budget year as far as how to handle that, the overage of sidewalk funds. I just wanted to let well, that's why know. when you came in and you presented, we can do X amount of feet of sidewalk if we do it ourselves. And then the other thing was, if we right. could, that's why I mentioned it because we've been taxing people. Putting money in there for sidewalks every year and never, never doing anywhere you know what we, what we said we would do. So right. that's why I said I wanted to see something tangible. And I didn't, you know, if we had to hire someone to get the sidewalks done, mm -hmm. you know, because later on in the meeting, after m initially mentioning that we can do more if we did it ourselves, then there came the discussion from you that if we do if we're doing that, we can't get all these other projects done. Right. So finally, I just about had it and said. Yeah. All the money's been there for, I can go back 10 years of putting money in for sidewalks and we don't spend it for anything or sidewalks. Right. And what I'm talking about is, is a, a project that was, was right. no, budgeted I without that. enough funds. So, yeah. And I'm sure exactly what you're saying would cover it. Yeah. And, and, uh, no, I understand that. Okay. Yeah. The, and that wasn't in that spreadsheet that Shane had put well, together? Did it include no, that? He, I re he told us because we had options. Mm -hmm. That's how we ended up. Not doing the parking right. lot and so choosing the Hulu Cat, which was thirty-six thousand dollars, and what we were told was we had the money. This hundred and six thousand dollars. Yeah, hundred. Uh, That's what we were going to spend. Hundred four or We're going to spend it on sidewalk. So that was part of the conversation at that meeting, because I, I can look up that meeting. We would have like never funded yeah. all that sidewalk if he, unless they told us we had the funds, because we reduced it. We got rid of C. Right. Going around shows the, the Hulu cap right. yeah. because yeah. it was thirty six thousand dollars. We went back and forth on that one. Yeah, we did. Um, and if, if someone said, "Well, we don't, we don't really have thirty six extra," right. then we would have said, "Forget that. We can do the paving without the parking lot or the Hulu cap." Yeah, the, the memo well, I said it, it said either use it for paving or sidewalks. We end up using it theoretically, I guess. You could say you use it for one or the other. I it remember was, like a like a one seventy four number. Is that what they kept saying? No, one eighty four was one eighty four or five ninety two. That was the uh, grant, I mean the, the, paving the paving agreement with basins for the sidewalks. Right. It was also it increased because the original we had to go to basins afterwards, right, right. and the, the price went up. That's right. I remember that. Um, but yeah, I mean, we thought. I mean, the originally when we planned what we would do for sidewalks we were we thought we had that funding right. and the paving funding lined right. up for that yeah. um, but if if we have to take it from fund balance right. um, wouldn't that have to be voter approved we're, i i believe so we're this just came about today mm -hmm. but we didn't want to know it and not share it so we don't have a resolution yet well we will right. find a resolution 
um, just to well, make we, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Just to make sure that I'm clear, that's coming from the the town fund balance or the highway fund balance. Highway. 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 So at the moment, so that would be out of that 1.3 million that's in reserve. For, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll get to you in just a second. Um, now I forgot my questions. Oh, I mean, we do have the fifty thousand that right, we had put about. in from last year, which is right. um, a potential for some right. of that. Right. Um, that was already voted on. Um, any other thing from the board before I go to Paul? Paul? Yeah. The only thing I want to mention, I I think most of the village people would be really happy. If you just address their immediate concern, if you have one sidewalk that's cracked or broken, bring a, a jackhammer by, bang out the 10 foot section. We got good quality guys that can uh, lay in some new cement 10 feet and just hit and miss 20 of them that you definitely need to fix. And I think they'd be happy that you're making progress little by little. <laughs> you said 20? Yeah, just no, but just little ones, little by little. I mean, when I work construction, you jackhammer them out, the boss That's puts an orange X on it, you have it done the next day. Yeah. That's yeah. what we've done. Yeah, yeah and Good. I think a lot of the people will be happy just to yeah. fix that way, little by little. Peter? Going back to the unassigned fine balance, we've been stealing money here and there, left and right. Where does that leave us? We've got to take some extra funds out. Where are we? Are we yeah. still within the recommended? We are. We haven't calculated with this, um, but after the proposed um, transfers that are set for town meeting, one of which is three hundred forty thousand. Yeah. Even after that, we're fine. Yeah. Not. So, yeah. But it, that hasn't been approved yet, and obviously. Right. No, I know. That's dependent on the rest of the project being approved. But I mean. Right, and the vote we, of the we town were meeting. Real close on our on the general fund balance when we got done mm -hmm. chopping that away. Yeah. And. It was getting tighter on the highway fund balance what well, was left in there. Right, That's we were getting closer to the stealing money from yeah. your reserves or your or your rainy day fund, and then when the rainy yeah. day comes along, you don't have it. I understand. Well, I mean, understand. That's what saved us in Irene when we had that fund balance back there, because I think we were the only town that didn't have to go out and borrow money to do the repairs. Right. Yeah. We got to fight with the state to get the money, but we, yeah. we finally ended up with it. Uh, and I'm seven. not fencing with you on stealing the money. I don't like that term, but I'm highlighting is over the time that I've sat here at one time or another we've put money allotted for sidewalk and it never got done so that's oh I know that's that what I'm, I'm saying I'm not arguing that's one it, yeah so we'll have a we'll get back and we'll get yes. on this yes. um, I'm sure and yes so then we'll at if we have to take more out of fund balance this is something we would have to at town meeting, we would uh, from the floor. Would you make, an, yeah. amendment? make an amendment? I, that would be worst case. I would think we can find other savings. So, okay. so let us go there first. All right. Okay. All right. Anything else? Any questions from the audience? All right. Thank you. Three sixteen. Um. No, well, I mean, we have um, Stephen and Kuda here. We might want to, you know, we if you can go, go back, back to go back to, um, but we can go back to you too. Why not? <laughs> no. Right now? Um, sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm Marcia Austin, my husband Jim. We live up on 235 Rockingham across from the Hetty Green. Mm -hmm. And so I was just, my concern was what was going to be happening with the Hetty Green. Okay. We've been That's seeing a lot of activity going on there. Um, windows open, doors open. It's like, if not daily, like weekly. So I'm just concerned now <coughs> that even with warmer weather, if it's going to become like a squatting ground. Mm -hmm. And if there's some way that it can get secured. Is yep. I know, I don't know how much the town can get involved, I know, but I, I am really concerned about it. Yeah. We actually went over that, um, our first item of the agenda, and then that's, uh, we're kind of like, we did that and then we're coming back to it, actually. Oh, okay. So you're here just in time now. Um, but we did put a health order. Um, it might take um, several weeks, because notification has to be put out to the heirs um, about that we will be boarding up the building. Yeah. Um, 
So I'm not sure the time frame on that, but it'll be in the next, uh, is it 14 days? Well, Steve, you know. I know. Yeah. Well, we're going to bring Mr. Ankuda up here, and he can kind of go over what and what's And I was just wondering how that would look. Is it going to have, like, five sheets on it? And Probably at this point. So that's going to make it I don't know, we'd have to talk to um, the maintenance people about what can be done, <laughs> but um, Steve, you want to come on up and we'll, sure. thanks uh, Mike and Everett. Thank All right. you. Thanks. We're kind of going back to the beginning here, <laughs> but that's all right. Hey, Mike, nice job down Center Street today. Thank you. They really did a good job. Talk with Jim. Okay. <laughs> you got it. Okay. So we did have a discussion earlier in the meeting on the health order, and we did approve the health order. Um, but, yes, thank you for con concerns about what it will look like. But we will, uh, um, I mean, we talked about boarding it up. Um, also a neighbor coming from the holidays, I'm part of the chamber and I'm with her. And um, just something to consider, I think the town has come so far forward. We have a downtown that is nearly not empty. We've gone from over 100 houses for sale to 15 or so in town. And so I think it's just something for us to think about as we're attracting people, we're attracting businesses, um, really think of some long-term plan that does not Yeah, and that's why we have Mr. Ankuda here, so we awesome. can figure out what, what, because we don't, the problem with this facility is the air, the current heirs don't want it, anything to do with it, um, so we've been told. So it would have to go through probate um, for us to even legally do anything with the building. I mean, right now we're able to put a health order to close it up so to keep people from going into the premises, but that's... Mr. Nkuda will kind of tell us what legally we can or cannot do. Plus, there's that a building. possibility there's a uh, fair amount of debt incurred, whether it be the, the dumpster people or the oil people or whoever on that property that right. we would absorb if we went forward. So, Gatana, do you have one, something to say before we get Steve Nkuda? No, I think just that it was in bankruptcy so long and there's so much debt with it that we're in a tough spot. Uh, yeah. Yet again, the big, ugly building. For now, it's, we're just trying to prevent further, um, perhaps, damage or activity. Very tricky, mm -hmm. and it, it was difficult. Is what? it a debt that the town wants to take on? <laughs> that's no, that's is it? That's the rub. <laughs> that's yeah. the rub. Yeah, that yeah, is, is the it? question. Yeah. And, and what? how much it yeah. would take, would cost, to, because we would have to, we'll get here from we're trying to find Steve, out, but... but um, We'd like we would to have to figure out. Yeah. Yeah, we would have to figure out how, what the legal process would be um, to, to take it to probate, so that we could put it, get it put on the market to get our taxes back. I mean, it's owes thirty six plus, water and, plus sewers, and water and sewers, five thousand, twelve thousand. But it's a difficult situation because the air it was left um, with heirs who don't want anything to do with it. So, and Mr. Ankuda, what can we do? <coughs> okay, so. <clears throat> I thought the, the actual the conference on the health order was going to be at 630 also. Oh. I think that's what Chuck had sent Oh, me. I'm sorry. Was everything it's at 630? Sorry. He typed okay. 630. Yeah. Okay. That's why I got oh. here at 630. Okay. okay. But you signed it, so that's great. Mm -hmm. So the health order is to it, for purposes of avoiding uh, health risks and, and, uh, and exposure and, and uh, protecting the property is, is what I understand is going is being ordered to abate any health risks, but again, it's not going to be pretty. It's going to be, I would imagine, plywood or screws indoors or things like that. Um, but we don't really have, the town doesn't have any control other than to police that if we abate the health risk that no one comes in and takes the plywood off. I mean, that's something that would be in violation of the health order and that's, that would be something that we could actually, people could be fined for. So. So we're pretty good shape there. It's not going to be pretty. I don't think anyone, by the way, would be stopped by going up there in warm weather with a roll paint roller and painting a nice color, uh, not graffiti, 
but by covering up the plywood with something that looks like good. And especially good artists that could paint a window there. Maybe that'd be useful. But that's not what you're here for. So <clears throat> as comes up fairly often is we have abandoned properties, properties that have more debt than they have value. And uh, of course, if there's a mortgage on this property, that would be in first place. But the town taxes are even ahead of the mortgage. So the town taxes are first, a mortgage would be second, any other debts that, that uh, Ms. Zunick had would be behind that. There's certainly, as I understand it, and I haven't really seen the, the papers for years on her, but I remember doing something years ago, I think for a bank against her years ago, uh, that there's no, there's no equity there, there's, no, there's nothing left for the heirs to bother with of trying to open an estate, deal with what's there. But that doesn't mean uh, that there doesn't make, it doesn't make good sense to do something. The rule, the law is this, that if no heir comes forward in 30 days after someone's death, then any creditor can ask the probate court to have an administrator appointed to deal with the estate. So what we have is that property with a and it has a debt on it or it has lots of debts uh, and you're a creditor as the and you're a first place creditor so you can open up an estate you can ask the court to appoint an administrator open up an estate and then that administrator could receive uh, could receive bids for the property and deal with getting the debts paid from the proceeds of the sale of the property uh, only if there is a secured mortgage does the, does would the administrator even have to talk to the bank. If there's no bank that's on that property, or if the bank's walked away, which may very well be because of hazardous issues, uh, that uh, then that's uh, you know that the the administrator would try to find a buyer for the property. Who would be a likely buyer for the property? I would think that this might be one of those projects where. It might be a local not-for-profit development group that you try to get together that can buy it. You know, the cost of tearing it down, just checking for asbestos, is going to be very expensive. That's so. That's the value. Someone could buy it for five thousand, so long as they committed to doing all those things as part of the process. And that five thousand would go to pay for the cost of opening the estate, paying for doing the paperwork. So it. it all you need is just to get enough out of the property to pay the costs of administering it. And in, in that way, the town probably doesn't see a nickel of back taxes, but at least gets it back either onto the tax rolls or into a public function. Yes? Would we have to, would the town or whoever have to satisfy the, the creditors in full or no? Uh, Say, for example, if you only took in X amount of dollars and there wasn't enough to cover all the debt. So that's that. Uh, so the short answer is, if it's a mortgage, we'd have to work with the mortgage company. Right. We can tell them we can stick it to them if we want to, right. and they should deal with us. Any other creditors, yeah. whatever you know, other creditors, right. they don't have a claim. They don't have a priority claim. Okay. Okay. It's like a bankruptcy. You know, when somebody goes yeah. into bankruptcy, right. and the bank gets paid, nobody else gets paid. Right. In this case, the town's first mortgage because we have a superior lien. The mortgage company's second. The town can put the property up for tax sale and bid it in for the amount of taxes owed if it wants to. Mm -hmm. And the bank could only get ahead of the town by redeeming it. Okay. The town, but you can't do a tax sale until you have a, somebody that you can give legal notice to. I think Ray Masuko is doing tax sales for the town. Mm -hmm. So Ray, I think, balked at it and said, hey, yeah. until there's a warm body that we can give notice to, we can't tax sale it. Now, do you have to go the tax sale process because that makes it another not, year? Not if not if we work a deal with the, the bank. If, we if there is a bank, it may not be a bank. Right. Okay. Yeah, it was our understanding that I mean it was in foreclosure, which is why we couldn't get the taxes, put it up for tax sale, and the bank walked away. But so I don't know if there where where any of that legal paperwork. Would there are be, there are two ways there? banks walk away. Sometimes they walk away just pinching their nose, and other times. They walk away by discharging their mortgage. Yeah, more and more, these banks hold their nose, 
sell a, a bunch of debt to somebody for 50 cents, right. you know, on $100, and then you're dealing with some group out of Texas. Right. And we have to deal yeah. a little more briskly with those people. We have to say, to heck with you, we're tax sailing it. Show up. If Here's your notice. Uh, there's a discharge, is what should be on file upstairs. The discharge is we'd have to do a title search to make sure okay. everything's discharged. Yeah. But either way, it makes sense. All we need to do is get really the cost of foreclosure or the cost of opening the estate to move it forward. You have the right as a creditor to to do that. You can go to court. You're like you, you know, the the children or the heirs didn't step forward. Now you have a right as a creditor to step forward. Name your person. I uh, I think I told Wendy that some stories about doing this in other towns. We had big ambulance bills for this poor soul in Springfield that was always uh, falling down in the street. Well, one time he got hit by a car, and uh, he owed the town thirty or forty thousand dollars in back ambulance bills to bring him to the hospital from just passing out on the street. And so we, the town of Springfield, we named I think Bonnie Creer back then. Her name turned to Reynolds after that as the administrator and filed a claim on behalf of him against the car driver, settle that personal injury case, use that money, pay off all his debts. You know, I mean, and that's, and pay the expense of the administration. In this case, what I, what I think all we need to do is get maybe five grand for the property, and that would cover all the costs of the probate. Because what we have to do in probate is, there's a filing fee, it's based on the theory, on the pro value of the property. I don't know, you know, it's, the filing fee maybe four or five hundred dollars maximum. We have to advertise uh, to credit for to creditors, and that could be a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars, and then and then that's it. Then the you know attorneys fee involved. I think the total cost would be under five grand to 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 move it along. So if ultimately we could sell it for five grand, mm -hmm. it, the, the problem is over. The alternative is to do nothing, be like the bank. Don't discharge anything, hold your nose, and drive by it every day. Mm. Yeah, I don't think that's what any of us really But you, you had said earlier about a contingency uh, in the selling agreement where they have to do something with it. Yeah, I don't it's think... it's full I'm of asbestos and we end up with some other buildings that just sit here. Um, so there would be some way to write it so they would have to fix it or remove that's what he's saying it. yes yeah as administrator that's included that would be as administrator that's the deal is you've got to do this within certain time frames we'll sell it to you for next to nothing right and next to nothing because we're taking that we're looking at the value of the property and the cost to clean it up subtract the cost to clean it up from the value of the property and what do you end up with you're lucky to have a few thousand dollars Not sure, so so that the only the only problem is um, what if if what if they, you know there's no you can't get a group together that might want to take on a project but maybe the neighbors would want to you know it is a gateway to the town from the north <laughs> <laughs> what do you think you want to take it on hey, um, <laughs> but working with the development group right. and they had grants grant funding you had a question i think yeah, yeah. or a comment in the business that i made i have a lot of, a lot of contractors for customers and I've asked them about this place in the last few months, and they've actually done a walkthrough on it. Um, I'm not really keen on us taking on, as far as the town, taking on a title and owning this place. There is asbestos and lead paint in the place. Um, and the demolishing of the building without those two factors in it is over 100 grand. All right, the, I don't know what the property's worth, a couple acres, 50,000, maybe. And it really isn't desirable. Not a lot of, there's a lot of road funding, but there's not a lot of offset to the back. Right, so with those things, in fact, you could possibly be in a quarter of a million dollars to demolish this place. You need it Yeah, I'm not proposing the town buy it. I'm proposing the town no one wants us to buy it. Yeah. Go, go, go to the probate court and have an administrator appointed. It's the estate that is the one that is taking control and trying to liquidate it and work, find a deal. So the town doesn't own it after that. town doesn't own it. The only way the town owns it is through the tax sale process. So we really don't want that. We, by far, would prefer uh, the estate to own it. And are there potential grants available for, I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe on, there are. I mean, just. What we just did. Everywhere sure. I turn, <laughs> we're dealing with grant documents. Right. 
Right. The island, you know, I mean, what's going on? The, the dilapidated buildings, you know, Springfield, all kinds of buildings have been torn down and different projects, you know, maybe some some housing, the, the theater in Springfield yeah. got rebuilt, the I'm Wilson Lodge. I'm in Springfield, but what I read in the, the, one of the papers is the town of Springfield's paying for it. Yeah. And that's, in fact, I think you have them, uh, an event with the police chief up there today, too, but a separate story. Well, that's a, well, wait, I, I, wait, what town am I in? <laughs> yeah, anyways, but I mean, the town of Springfield has been paying for that. I checked a few years ago because people came up to me, both on the village board, said, why don't you do what Claremont did at the time? Well, that was some years ago, and what Claremont had at the time was they had the luxury of they owned some capacity with the landfill where they could go in there with the highway crew or whoever, knock it down and haul it to the landfill. That was probably maybe 20 years ago. You can't do that now. It's going to be a special dumpster, a lined dumpster, a double lined dumpster, taken to a special location, blah, 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 as, as it is material. So, I mean. Yeah, the asbestos, the, uh, checking for the asbestos is the trigger that makes it so different as to how much it costs to dispose of. Right. If you don't do the asbestos check, you're paying the highest possible amount to dispose of this stuff. Yeah. If I you mean, go in and do the asbestos check, you can isolate it, and then at least you know you know what's there, and you can get a much cheaper dispos uh, you know, disposal cost. Right. But again... We just did that on Church Place, the same process. And because of the asbestos, it tripled the price of everything. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's it. People have to be looking at the future, and this is the project they want to do here. You can have this property, but you've got to be committed to doing this project. Yeah, it's, I mean, not a, it's not one of those projects where somebody, if you have one of those persons in your town that wants to come here and, and make it into uh, uh, really, really uh, uh, unsupervised housing, then buy it cheap like they do with foreclosure properties, you want to control that property so you don't sell it to someone that does that. You want to sell it with enough right. restrictions that, that no one is going to just make it suitable to put some poor souls in there right. that can get some Section 8 money. Yeah, and we, yeah, we, and we definitely don't want to take on the cost of taking it down. We've right. enough of that. Um, Peter, you, yeah, you mentioned the town would own it through a tax sale, but that's only if they bid on the property. That's no, I, that's that's only the last. That's the resort if we have a, a mortgage that won't give us a discharge. If we don't, if there's if there's no mortgage on the property, then we don't. Then we can sell it free of that mortgage through the estate. You see, that the more that the estate has to pay off any secured creditors. Uh, if there's any value there, if there's a bank, if there's a mortgage, then the town has to revert back and say to the to the mortgage company, town, we're ahead of we're ahead of you, so we're going to push the the the, uh, the, the tax sale. So that's that's just the leverage to convince the bank to discharge the mortgage. But again, that's not the recommended approach. The recommended approach is get it in, is to town petition to get an administrator appointed to take control of the property, figure out, advertise for the creditors, find out who the creditors are, and deal with it. It's called an insolvent estate, an estate where there is more debt than there is there are assets. It happens sadly all the time. But, but I, I'm going back to your statement where you said the only way the town would own it was if it was done at a tax sale. But a tax sale, people bid on the properties that are up for sale. So if right. the town didn't bid on it, then it doesn't get taxed. It doesn't get anywhere. It's sit there in, so in, in, in perpetuity until somebody I, steps up and I, wants to take it. I did at least six times the the uh, sand pits in Springfield behind Hojo's for tax sale, begging people to buy it, saying this is the most developable piece of property in town. Just buy it. But there were some old coal. There was some coal tar there. No one would would step forward and buy it. There finally the state came forward, stepped in, and actually tracked down the people that owned it uh, and hadn't paid taxes on it for s six years yeah. and paid those folks a bunch of money to let go where, you know, it was unnecessary. Tax sale is a good function to kind of get properties back on the, the tax rolls. But we don't want to own it. We don't want it to come into the town's name. You know, there is a, under the Brownsfields, and you know about Brownsfields, there's an exemption for a municipality that takes title to brownfields proper type properties uh, purely because it's part of the tax collection process. You don't become a 
a potentially responsible party, you know, like if you're if you own an industry somewhere, you're responsible whether you polluted the property or you 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 just happened to run your industry there and somebody owned it before you. Where a town that takes title pursuant to tax sale doesn't become a potentially responsible party. The EPA recognizes that. But we don't want to go there. We we just want to get it cleaned up and back on the tax rolls. Or serving a public function. There has been some interest that we've, we've got rumors that uh, there's uh, the housing trust want may be interested in developing apartments in there. Uh, and somebody mentioned a homeless shelter going in there. So, I mean, there are some that's, rumors that's, out there. I, I agree with you. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not pushing that. I'm just saying <coughs> that's the, some of the stuff I'm hearing. So The town's in first position from the tax standpoint. So we have a certain amount of control. Yeah, I know. I so I say when, if it, if and when that comes to that, we put those restrictions, as you mentioned, on it. That I mean, they're doing that in Rutland with anybody that they sell a house cheap, but whoever takes it signs on the agreement that they will, you know, rehabilitate that property to a a, a certain point, and that's how they get it so cheap. So what I'd be looking from the, from the select board for is a question for approval to go ahead and petition, file a petition on behalf of the town to uh, have an administrator named for the estate and and carry it through. I mean, I from I, I don't mind advancing the cost of the filings and things like that. I, we'd, every other estate we advance the money for, so. Um, what do people think? No, Jim, you had a... I was just curious if there's any way we can follow this through as being the providers to the property to know where it's going and how it's coming along as it goes along. Is that an easy thing to do for us? You you could buy, you could, once we get it into the estate, you could buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I said that twice, I'm not quite Did sure. I say that? Put <laughs> fire insurance on it. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. Park your cars in front of the fire station. <laughs> no, never mind. <laughs> I mean, this is recorded, so we're not saying I, I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we could get a days in in there or something. I don't know. Follow the process? Better than a homeless shelter. No, I, I'm just saying that's a that's a suggestion somebody made, and I just well, looked at it like, hey, you've got to be kidding me. Well, could you yeah. just do release these from the prison? <laughs> oh, she tried that once. Already happened. Yeah, we tried that down as a... Uh, so so the, great, you know, the great thing to do is to work with the local development folks and say, look, we'll volunteer, we'll be on your board, we'll work on this, and we'll help raise the money to do this project. But, you know, somebody's got to have a vision, but you couldn't put it together today. So we got to go through this process to get it to a point where the title's, the title's not going to get cleaned up unless somebody does something. Right. Yeah. And it, it, it's, it's just going to sit there. It's just going it to crumble. One yeah. other question. Wendy, Wendy's been in touch with a, there's a certain person that wants to buy some of those vehicles that are sitting there. And be part of the estate, so okay. we don't we don't have control over yeah. that. We don't even okay. have a tax lien on them. No, no. Somebody somebody asked me in Walmart, Claremont. I told I directed them right to oh, yeah. Wendy. And Is that big yeah. Cadillac still there? Cadillac oh, yeah, still there. there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fixture. Yeah, there's like four of them there. Yeah, four. I was going to say there's three or four. Yeah. So do you have an ordinance about abandoned vehicles that are registered in Walmart? Yeah, I think so. Junkyard. They don't. Uh, no. 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 There's no junkyard ordinance in the vote. Um, um, but yeah, so that's. If some, you know, if we do go through this process, um, no enforcement. Then they would, they could be sold, but they would end up going. Yes, to be part of the estate is. Yeah. Just to tell you what pro probate is, uh, you file a petition with the court. You give notice to the people who would inherit mm -hmm. the property if there was anything there, and and if and see if they object. If they if they consent, then we just file a consent with the court. If they don't consent, the court would schedule a hearing when anyone that objects to the petition has to come forward and explain why they object and, and come up with a better idea. Nobody's going to object. So once it, and it, a special ad, or an administrator is appointed, then the administrator has to file an inventory within 30 days. An inventory is a list of what's there. It would be basically a, a deed to the property. That I would mention on it mortgages of record and, and it would, I, I guess it sounds like four or five cars. We'd have to have the police run the plates or ID numbers to figure out who really owns them. Um, but those would be part part of the inventory. Then we advertise in the newspaper. It, have to put it in the newspaper for th uh, three times. And the statute of limitations on someone with a claim runs four months after the first advertisement. 
and you've probably seen them in the newspaper. Anyone with a claim against the estate of Maria, in this case, uh, must you know, step forward and file with the probate court a notice of claim and explain what their claim is. The administrator then can either accept or reject those claims. If the administrator rejects those claims, then the probate court schedules a hearing on the validity of, of those claims. Uh, once that four-month period has gone by, then it's time to wrap up the estate. In this case, it, the estate probably would stay open until people could get their act together to come up with a plan to liquidate the prop, the real estate. But you could get rid of the vehicles and other. Oh yeah, sell the that. sell the vehicles. Authorize the neighbors with their paint rollers to come over. The tree committee to plant trees in front. Of the tree committee, <laughs> the arborists. Does uh, it, a, a question. Does it make sense to hold off on the health order if? Uh, it's going to take a few months. But if there's advertising in the health order, I, I just don't want to spend advertising money more than we need to. Don't uh, let me. Uh, I'd like to see the health order signed. Let me just ask. Uh, I had the impression that the heirs were all known and they had no objection. Yes. Is that I mean, what that's what that's we're they're, they're presumably on. known? Yeah. So yeah. if we know who the heirs are, then we don't, and they consent, we don't have to advertise. Okay. Okay, yeah. so we'll at yeah. least get this signed. Yeah, let's get it signed and yeah. enable you to... I think the other thing is to secure it so like it doesn't become a heroin den or something. Like exactly. The concerns are... That's what our concerns so plus, okay. plus, under under the health ordinance, we have the absolute right to go in immediately and abate the public health risk so we can get the public works guys to go in there and put up the plywood. That's something that really the administrator of an estate would have some responsibility to do once appointed. It's better to have it done right now under okay. this than to than to do it in sixty days. You okay. know, and yeah. hire some third party to do it. Or right. or would the town public works be working for the administrator and doing it? I don't know. That's a little iffy. I'd much rather have public works do it under a health order and and submit a bill to the estate for doing it. Okay. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, well it's not on our agenda that we're making a decision on any of this but I guess we could amend, yeah. uh, we could make a decision now and then and ratify, ratify it, it next meeting. yeah well it take up a I week to get to the paper I anyway. think it would be I mean I would or suggest that, that we have um, a proposal and paperwork and a schedule and have it on your next agenda. agenda okay that agreeable? I'm agreeable to that. Be two weeks and then, you know. yeah yeah it's fine and okay. then for your benefit or everyone's benefit you live right there if you see someone or anybody or anything doesn't look like they belong there drop I a dime to the pd yeah in december and they did come up and okay. they checked it out but they said there's really nothing they can do unless the actual yeah. person is there yeah well i mean if you if you see somebody i mean at least yeah no, it's, it's kind of eerie a window be open one day and then the next yeah. day another window well, i noticed going back and forth to work i've seen so the doors open the doors closed yeah and as for being notified, I mean, we'll, it'll be on the agenda um, when we discuss it again. So probably two weeks from now. But also um, keep in touch with Wendy. Right. You, you can you can just call me or email me, and I can um, let you know what's happening. Yeah. Okay. That's one benefit of us doing it is it's public record. Yeah. Sure. And it's on the website, so you'll see when you'll see the agendas and what's posted on oh, okay. the agendas. Yeah. If you get an email, drop me an email. I'll get it on my list. I'll send it out to you. Perfect. All right. Any other questions? No. No. All right. Thank you. Oh, you're yeah. welcome. Thank you. Good Sorry you. about the mix-up of the time. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad you showed. <laughs> Apologize for that. That's probably a six thirty. Yeah, you were. <laughs> I think you're early. Okay. So, of course, I left my. My paperwork. <laughs> well, joining club <laughs> with that emergency I had going on today. My evaluation is saying at home. Um, I just too. frantically looking for it. I thought, yeah. it, was I thought it was in this pile of stuff too. Okay, uh, so moving on to manager's here. review. No, I don't have um, just to let people know, um, we'll be going into executive session. This is just a. Um, we're actually doing this at six months, a little over six months into um, the town manager's. Um, service here um, and just touch base and, and see where where things are um, all right so we need a call to go into executive session. Um, 
Madam Chairman, I move that the board enter executive session to discuss the appointment or employment or evaluation of a public officer employee, but the public body must make a final decision to hire or appoint in an open meeting and must explain the reasons for, division, for its final decision. Uh, quoting 1 BSA, subchapter 313 A3, uh, pursuant to, as I just stated, Title I, section 313 A2. So, second. That's the, only, that's the only motion no, we need to make. Sure. All right. All in favor? Oh, and, and uh, let me amend that to invite. Do we want to invite the manager? Sure. In? Well, I don't see why not. Yeah. All right. Your second? You had a second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. All right. Um, just sit there. It's just going it to crumble. One yeah. other question. Wendy, Wendy's Wendy been in touch with a, there's a certain person that wants to buy some of those vehicles that are sitting there. And be part of the estate, so okay. we don't we don't have control over yeah. that. We don't even okay. have a tax lien on them. No, no. Somebody somebody asked me in Walmart, Claremont. And I told I directed them right to oh, yeah. Wendy. And Is that said, big Cadillac you know, still there? Cadillac oh, yeah, still there. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's a fixture. Yeah, there's four of them there. Yeah, four. I was going to say there's three or four. Yeah. So do you have an ordinance about abandoned vehicles that are registered in Walmart? Yeah, I think so. Junkyard. They don't. Uh, no. 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 There's no junkyard ordinance in the building. Um, but yeah, so that's. If some, you know, if we do go through this process, um, no enforcement. Then they would, they could be sold, but it would end up going. Yes, it'd be part of the estate. Is yeah. just to tell you what pro probate is. Uh, you file a petition with the court. You give notice to the people who would inherit mm -hmm. the property if there was anything there, and and if and see if they object. If they if they consent, then we just file a consent with the court. If they don't consent, the court would schedule a hearing when anyone that objects to the petition has to come forward and explain why they object and, and come up with a better idea. Nobody's going to object. So once it, and it, a special ad, or an administrator is appointed, then the administrator has to file an inventory within 30 days. An inventory is a list of what's there. It would be basically a, a deed to the property. I would mention on it mortgages of record and, and it would I, I guess it sounds like four or five cars. We'd have to have the police run the plates or ID numbers to figure out who really owns them. Um, but those would be part part of the inventory. Then we advertise in the newspaper. It, have to put it in the newspaper for th uh, three times. And the statute of limitations on someone with a claim runs four months after the first advertisement. And you've probably seen them in the newspaper. Anyone with a claim against the estate of Maria in this case, uh, must you know step forward and file with the probate court a notice of claim and explain what their claim is. The administrator then can either accept or reject those claims. If the administrator rejects those claims, then the probate court schedules a hearing on the validity of, of those claims. Uh, once that four-month period has gone by, then it's time to wrap up the estate. In this case, it, the estate probably would stay open until people could get their act together to come up with a plan to liquidate the prop, the real estate. But you could get rid of the vehicles and other... Oh, yeah, sell the, sell the vehicles, authorize the neighbors with their paint rollers to come over. The tree committee to plant trees in front of you. The tree committee, <laughs> the arborist. Just uh, a, a question. Does it make sense to hold off on the health order? If, if uh, it's going to take a few to, months. But if there's advertising in the health order... I, I just don't want to spend advertising money more than we need to. Don't uh, let me. Uh, I'd like to see the health order signed. Let me just ask. Uh, I had the impression that the heirs were all known and they had no objection. Yes. Is that I mean, what? That's, well, that's that's they're they're presumably on. known. Yeah. So yes, if sir. we know who the heirs are, then we don't, and they consent, we don't have to advertise. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll yeah. at least get this signed. Yeah. Let's get it signed and yeah. enable you to. I think the other thing is. To secure it so like it doesn't become a heroin den or something like exactly the concerns are That's what our so plus it up. plus mm -hmm. under under the health ordinance we have the absolute right to go in immediately and abate the public health risk so we can get the public works guys to go in there and put up the plywood that's something that really the administrator of an estate would have some responsibility to do once appointed it's better to have it done right now under okay. this than to than to do it in 60 days okay. know, and yeah. hire some third party to do it. Or, right. or would the town 
Public Works be working for the administrator and doing it? I don't know. That's a little iffy. I'd much rather have Public Works do it under a health order and and submit a bill to the estate for doing it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, well, it's not on our agenda that we're making a, a decision on any of this, but I guess we could amend, yeah. uh, we could make a decision now and then and ratify, ratify it, it next. Yeah. yeah. Well, but take up I wait to get to the papers. I anyway. think it would be. I mean, I would or suggest that, that we have um, a proposal and paperwork and a schedule and have it on your next agenda. agenda. Okay. Is that Just agreeable? I'm agreeable with that. Yeah, it two weeks. And, you know. yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's fine. And okay. then for your benefit or everyone's benefit, you live right there. If you see someone or anybody or anything doesn't look like they belong there, drop and a dime to the PD. Yeah. In December. And they did come up and okay. check it out, but they said there's really nothing they can do unless the actual yeah. person is there. Yeah, well, I mean, if you, if you see somebody, I mean, at least. Yeah. No, it's, it's kind of eerie. A window will be open one day, and then the next day yeah. another window. Yeah. Well, I noticed going door. back and forth to work. I've seen so the doors open, the doors closed. Yeah. And as for being notified, I mean, we'll, it'll be on the agenda um, when we discuss it again. So probably two weeks from now. But also um, keep in touch with Wendy. Right. You, you, can, you can just call me or email me, and I can um, let you know what's happening. Yeah. Okay. That's one benefit of us doing it is it's public record. Yeah. Sure. And it's on the website, so you'll see when you'll see the agendas and what's posted on oh, okay. the agendas. Yeah. If you get an email, drop me an email. I'll get it on my list. I'll send it out to you. Perfect. All right. Any other questions? No. No. All right. Thank you. Oh, you're yeah. welcome. Thank you. Good Sorry about you. the mix-up of the time. Oh. Yeah. I'm yeah. glad you should. Apologize for that. <laughs> That's probably yeah. a 6 30. Yeah, you were. <laughs> I think you were early. Okay. So, of course, I left my... My well, I was trying to talk <laughs> with that emergency I had going on today. My evaluation is saying at home. Um, I just too. frantically looking for it. I thought yeah. it was in, I thought it was in this pile of stuff, too. Okay, so moving on to manager's review. No, I don't have Just to let people know, um, we'll be going into executive session. This is just a. Um, we're actually doing this at six months, a little over six months into um, the town manager's. Um, service here um, and just touch base and, and see where where things are um, all right so we need to call to one executive That's session weird. I it. Um, madam chairman I move that the board enter executive session to discuss the appointment or employment or evaluation of a public officer employee but the public body must make a final decision to hire or appoint in an open meeting and must explain the reasons for a division for its final decision uh, quoting 1 BSA, subchapter 313A3, uh, pursuant to, as I just stated, Title I, section 313A2. So, second. That's, the, second? Only, that's the only motion yeah, we need to second. make. Sure. All right. All in favor? Oh, and, and uh, let me amend that to invite. Do we want to invite the manager sure. in? Sure. Well, I don't see why not. Yeah. All right. Your second? You had a second. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. Okay. I will. I, I would prefer to withdraw my motion that I made earlier to go into executive session because we do have some open session items to deal with before we go into the evaluation session. Yes, I'll withdraw my second. Okay. So we're back. In open so session. we're back in open session. Okay. So sorry about the confusion. Uh, review items for the next meeting, February 19th. Oh, no Hetty Green's on there. <laughs> Hetty Green. <laughs> right. And um, I'm just reminding you that that's the meeting where the joint meeting will be after it. So yeah. we're trying to minimize items or at least put things that are pretty quick. Um, we did receive cemetery mowing bid. We'll probably have that on the agenda. It could be postponed. It's not um, time sensitive at this point. Um, we may have an RLF. Uh, Yes, loan. I think the RLF if is going to be on there for the, if for it's the ready. flat iron building. Okay. And then Green Lantern Solar, I don't think we'll put that on because that would be a longer conversation. What's that? Green the, Lantern. the Green Lantern Solar. Oh, yeah, no. We'll, yeah, we'll we, put we that on that a different back in March, not in, the, in February. Yeah. 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 Because the board could change depending yeah. on who gets elected or doesn't get elected. Yeah, so so right now it's um, the only for sure one is the uh, Hetty Green, Green probate. 
and then possible probabilities are the RLF of a loan. Well, that's, and then, that's a definite uh, well, pending if, if, credit credit report. Yeah, right. and if the paperwork gets done because it needs yeah. to be done by next week, and but I don't they know. They should if, supposed if, to be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? All right. Uh, joint board meeting February nineteenth. Probably it's, nothing additional. It's, we have plenty on it already. Yeah, are we, the are same we gonna, are we there. gonna go through all the stuff that's on that agenda? I mean, some of that stuff I sleep through. I'm sorry, but no offense intended to the people that are presenting, but Okay, well you won't sleep through the housing part. I know that. I'm looking kinda of looking at that one. Okay. And I'll have more information to send you. There's a few other items on there that I Well think. we we can because it'll be after our meeting. We'll try to limit people to uh, five minutes, maybe. Okay. So. Um, since it is postponement. All right. Review and approve order bills and warrants. Motion to approve orders, bills, and warrants is circulated. Second. Tonight. All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Where Other business. They? They're right there. Oh, I haven't seen them. I think they signed Sign them. You signed them. I think they started down here, so she may not. Uh, no, no, she did not. the I licenses. did the liquor licenses. Oh. I thought they were all signed. That's signed. All right. All, all um, signed. That's signed. Any uh, by me? Yeah. Any other then business done last week? Not this yeah. week. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, any other business done? That's signed. No. Peter? Yes, I know Wendy and I have chatted about this um, ID cards that we used to have with a little jail picture on it and you don't know what you're on the select board and oh. what your position is or something. <laughs> the only reason I'm asking is because when you're wearing that down to recycle and you approach people about their stickers, they don't give you any static. Or if you ask them, did you pay for your trash you just throw in there before you drive off, it helps. And I think it's nice to know that, you know, we maybe we should go back. I know two years ago, oh, yeah. people, it's I guess somebody on the trustees said they didn't want it. I'd like to have ID cards for employees and board members, which we don't have. So, yes, I, I would, I'd like to do that. Uh, just a thought. I don't know what the board feels about but especially it. Especially I, I thought just for the select board, that's, yeah. you know. Well, I mean, we have the funds in our... Our select board packet to. I mean, well, I have an idea. Yeah, yeah, we haven't had that, that much in a while, though, I don't think. Oh, no, it's. Well, they're done in house old, anyway. But, I have but we one. did them in house, that's right. Yeah, they're yeah. done yeah. in house. So they so won't be really expensive. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They're just basically the select board ones and trustee were just a little business card style anyway, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Not, not anything ostentatious. No, I think it's a good idea. Oh, Stefan. No. I don't know. Is the. The skating rink ever open? Yes. And the rope toe? No. Update on that? Uh, the rope toe? It hopefully will happen this winter, but it's not likely. Um, it's because of taking the rope off of the toe. It wasn't open the, last year either. Yeah. But we fund it. When you say we fund it, yes. I mean, we're, we had to get a new rope. And we need a new rope this year because the inspector said we had to have a new rope. That that wasn't. Well, I'm an just option. questioning if we're funding it and it's not open. Is there, where's the funding go? When did the rink open? Because it didn't open when they said it was. Uh, last. At Martin Luther King, nothing was open up there. It's it's been hard with the with the weather, and now with the. It was with the, the warmer best snow weather. we've had, and kids had four days off. He's doing his best to get the rink open. It was open the last I heard. I don't know if it's open now. I, I, it would have been except for the weather. It may have gotten sloppy with the weather. He's, oh. he's disappointed too. I mean, the recreation director is disappointed that there isn't more to do. All right. Anything I know else? the kids have got vacation coming up I mean, February 14. No. It would be nice to have something for them to do. Oh, oh there will be programs. All right. Anything else? Katana, maybe the money that we're not spending on uh, that, maybe they'll pay for the new rope. Maybe they're a number eight thousand dollars or something. Maybe we can scrape that up out of the. Out of the staffing. Eight? I thought it was four. Well, I think we can. We need to look so at that. Ryan told thing. me last month. Why the rope? Eight thousand dollars. All the care. Last month it was. Okay. Um, the only other thing I have is that um, on Monday, February eleventh, um, there. The U University of Vermont is pulling together something called a Community Resilient Focus Group. They're looking for 10 to 12 people 
who would be interested in doing a focus group to talk about community resilience. You have to be a resident of Rockingham and you have to be 18 years or, or older. Um, there is a um, registration online that you have to do as well, but if you have are interested, um, you can um, contact Amy Kelsley at UVM. So Amy dot K-E-L-S-E-Y at U-V-M dot E-D-U. Um, it's also been posted to various Facebook groups too. So if you're interested, Monday night at 11, but you have to pre-register. Well, they all. pay you $50. They do pay, oh, that's right. They pay do pay you $50, $50 and give you, give you supper. So Supper and $50. Yeah. And it's, I think it's only like an hour and a half. Two and a half hours. Oh, two and a half. Okay. Two and a half hours. Okay. Hour so they are going to ask you to work for that $50. <laughs> Where is it? At the library. Um, all right, I think that's it. Bucks an hour. So now, we're you want ready me to do it on. again? <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, I did bring my sheet. So, <laughs> uh, Madam Chairman, I move that the board enter executive session to discuss the appointment or employment or evaluation of a public officer employee. Uh, but the public body must make a final decision to hire or appoint at an open meeting, and it must explain the reasons for its decision. Uh, pursuant to Title One, Section Three One Three, parentheses A, parentheses Two. Anyway. And invite the manager to attend. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay.